Hello, everybody. I am really, really excited to be streaming this inside of my Facebook group, but we have Spirit Bird here. She is one of my really, really good friends and wellness entrepreneurs, and she's going to be guiding this conversation as well. So if you are uh, listening inside of Facebook land, let us know um, that you're here. And Spirit Bird, I'm going to let you take over here for this coffee chat. So <laughs> let's chat. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So I, um, you know, it's so funny when we're um, out, especially in the world of internet and when you're exchanging with people, um, both as friends and professionally, there's a lot of things that we still don't know about each other. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, so Chris, yeah, of course, um, you know, uh, you describe yourself, you're a soulful business coach uh, and leadership coach. Uh, and you have a special passion for wellness, um, women and wellness coaches and practitioners, helping them to create financial independence. Yes. And yes. going oh gosh, we have, yes. That's <laughs> yeah. a conversation we need to have. <laughs> Normalize this. <laughs> yes, indeed. And um, so I'm just tracking back because I was going to ask you this question and then it made me think about it for myself too. So I've had to go through a lot of healing in my process of actually sharing my work and sharing my gifts. And, um, and one of the places for me that I had to grow a lot was that place of financial abundance with it being okay to receive money, with it being okay to charge money. And honestly, to be honest, where I'm at right now, because it's a growing process where you start in one spot, you kind of go around the circle, you learn some things, and then you yeah. move to the new layer. And one yeah. of the places that I'm at right now actually is, wait, can I just let this be easy? Mm. <laughs> as part of the process of just receiving. <laughs> I love that question. It doesn't have to be complicated. What's working? Do more of that. Yes. Oh <laughs> so gosh, I just love to hear from you a little bit about how you all got started. Yeah. Again. Oh my gosh. So this is such a good conversation because I think as wellness entrepreneurs uh, or holistic practitioners or spiritual healers, you know, we tend to undercharge and undervalue our own services where we give a lot out, but we don't necessarily allow us to receive abundantly. And I know for me, I, when I first started my business, um, it was as a massage therapist my husband still jokes with me to this day because I was literally charging $12. What I got was $12 for one hour massage. Mm -hmm. Insane, right? I I didn't, you know, I was at looking around like, what is it that I needed to do? And I got a Groupon and Groupon makes you discount your prices 50% and they give you 50% of that. And so, um, you know, that I, I wasn't stable enough in my own value to actually charge personally what I was worth. And so I ended up working a lot of, uh, a lot for very, very little money. And so I had to, you know, also get really clear around what was the value that I was bringing, not just what was the time involved in, right? One of the, the pieces that I see a lot of that, that I was struck that I struggled with when I then began to move into nutritional therapy and health coaching was, um, how do I price my offers? How do I price like a one hour session, right? And what I ended up doing was making the mistake of seeing it as I was just giving somebody a one hour session. They got a one hour period of time for me, or they got 12 sessions with one hour sessions. And that's not what people are investing in. And when we look at it that way, we're really undercharging the container of support that we're actually holding for people. People aren't investing in a one hour session. They're investing in a solution to a problem. Mm -hmm. And when I got really clear about the value and the transformation that people were getting instead of me making it about me and what I was charging, right? Mm -hmm. um, that actually started clearing up for me. Then I was actually able to start creating some really amazing offers that I knew were high value. They were absolutely going to be getting some incredible results. And I would allow myself to charge appropriately for that too. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's such a simple flip of perspective mm -hmm. to be able to move. Cause I know so many, I mean, same thing. I was there too, where it was like, Oh, like, is this taking from somebody else? And yeah. kind of that piece that's really at the beginning of the journey, I think for most um, spiritual and wellness entrepreneurs. And I love that switch of actually detaching yourself from the offer that you're even doing. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things that I learned early on 
was that whenever the uncomfortableness came up, it was because I was making it about me, not about the actual other person. You know, if I was afraid to, you know, share a price, it was because I was afraid of what they would think about me, right? Versus how can I actually help this person get what it is that they want? Can I just be supportive and listen and help them get the solution that they're asking for instead of making it need be, are they gonna be, are they gonna think I'm okay? Are they gonna be offended by Like, it's just so crazy how we just make it all about us instead of, no, we don't need to do that. Let's just partner with somebody. Let's make it about them. And then how do we match what we've got in our, you know, offers to help them get the result that they want? Um, and, and that really, uh, there was a pivotal moment. Um, if it's okay, if I share this story, yeah. this is a pivotal moment for me. And it was the very first time I created like a, a high-end package, six month package. And, um, it felt really crunchy to even offer it. And somebody had contacted me. They had seen me do a health talk at a local hospital. It was a lymphedema group. And she, she said, I really loved what you were saying. And I really want your help. I need to lose 50 pounds. I'm waking up in the middle of the night with anxiety. And I just, am not taking good care of myself. The lymphedema is getting worse. Can you help me? And, and, uh, she said, oh, and by the way, I don't have a job. And I'm like, okay. Hmm. What should I offer her? I'm like, well, she doesn't have a job, you know, maybe, gosh, if I offer her this package, like she's going to think I'm just trying to like take her to the bank or something. So why don't I just offer her the $97, like one-off session. Right. Mm -hmm. And I stopped and I asked myself, Chris, wait a minute. Can you help her lose 50 pounds, <laughs> get control of her anxiety and get back on track with her lymphedema in one session? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, I can't. Why am I offering that to her then? What she's asking me for is a very, very specific result. So I need to give her what it is that she's asking for. And so I told her, I said, look, I would be more than happy to support you. And this is something that would take time. Losing 50 pounds takes time. Having support and getting into a new way of being takes time. There's a couple of ways I could support you. I could support you in a three month package or a six month package. Which one would you like? And she's like, oh, I'll take the six month package. Here's my credit card. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah. whoa. Like that allowed me to really um, understand a couple things. Number one, people are not investing just based on price. They're investing in the transformation that they want, right? And when we show up and fully support somebody and helping them get what they want, then the conversation becomes a lot more natural, a lot more supportive, a lot more easy. And when we take the pressure off at making about ourselves and, and put it back on how we can actually support that other person, it's, it's just so much more fun to have conversations like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I find it goes both ways too. Right. Mm -hmm. So I remember learning this early on, um, in one of my first businesses, I actually had a natural body care company and, um, somewhere along the line, someone, someone gave us really, um, realistic advice that I probably wouldn't have thought of on my own. Cause at the time we were just trying to find capital so that we could get mm -hmm. the supplies that we needed to really launch the vision that we had. And they said, um, well, you want to be careful with, um, getting the capital or investment, because if you don't get the full amount that you're asking for, you won't have everything you need to actually fulfill that vision. And then you're just going to be owing money and not being where you want to be. Yeah. And the same is true for, you know, both for the clients that I might be working with, same part of that story. You know, I wouldn't want to offer something that isn't going to get them all the way to where they want to be. Yep. And also in my own business, as I'm continuing to grow, there's still that place where, um, you know, most seasoned coaches realize that when you invest in something and that next vision for yourself, you usually end up seeing the money come back around pretty quickly for you. It's like when you spend the most amount, you'll also have your biggest month. I don't know why it works that way, but it, it seems does. Oh my God, it's that energetic flow that happens, <laughs> right? Oh my gosh, <laughs> totally. Yeah, it's what was that? Oh my gosh, one of my coaches actually shared a, a word for it. I think it was what a prosperity purchase or something. Ah, love it. Love like, it. yes, that's exactly what happens. Yep. And I was just in that spot, you know, as much as I've been doing this work, I, as I continue to grow and scale my business, uh, I was just doing that a few months ago, I found myself looking for help in a couple of places. 
And I started to sort of piecemeal it together. I was like, okay, well, maybe I can, you know, have this person do this particular job for me and this person do this particular job for me. And, you know, that's fine too. It's not like there's anything wrong with it. But then I also realized, oh, what am I doing? I'm like, kind of like trying to like save a little bit here and a little bit here, but I'm doing all this extra work being the middleman between the two when actually it's much better for me at this point to actually invest in this other person that can do the whole thing for me. <laughs> yeah. 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 And get me all the way there, you know? Yes. Oh my gosh. I love that analogy and that perspective of how can we get all the way there? Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah. so true. And, um, you know, and you are actually talking about a really good point around support as well. Like often we try to get ourselves there and we don't know what we don't know. And we don't know what we're missing because we haven't gotten there yet. And so when we allow ourselves to also receive the support, you know, that support is going to help us get across the finish line where we want to go a heck of a lot quicker than if we are running into these obstacles that we're not sure how to navigate and we're trying to, you know, piece things together and download a whole bunch of freebies or, you know, it's like, um, you know, the, one of the things that we say in the transformational coaching world is, you know, information doesn't equal transformation. And it's, it really is true. And, you know, you allowing yourself to have that support and to be like, nope, I'm gonna invest in myself so that I can go here quicker you know, that, that is so, so key and so, so valuable for any business owner. I don't know one business owner that doesn't invest and allow themselves to have support. And yet when we're first starting off, we really kind of are in our own way. And we think that we're supposed to do it on our own, or we just, you know, need to piece all of the things together and, you know, let me start creating money first and then I'll invest in a business coach, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, wait a minute, (laughs) wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Yep. Same. I, I, I see that a lot with, um, one of the places that I end up coaching people on a lot is the vision of having, wanting to have like a retreat center, Ooh, which yeah. I love. And I love how much, uh, is starting to grow there with people wanting to tie in their property with their business and also with healing the land and also with mm-hmm. health and wellness, you know, really creating these spots where a lot of healing on a lot of different layers is taking place. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's we are actually looking for land up north to do oh, something really exciting like so amazing well that's perfect then because I mean can you imagine if you had tried to just like save money first to like get the property and thought that then the business would come when you had the property yeah no yeah that's crazy yeah it doesn't work that way yeah it doesn't it doesn't work. it's like if you build it they will come right <laughs> you actually so- are what uh, you, I'm sure you've heard this, like knitting the parachute on your way down. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you have, um, you know, a business that is working is sustainable. Uh, as far as I can tell, it sure seems like you love it. I um, um, love it. Yeah, I do. I love it. Love, love, love it. And I love it because I get to, you know, help other women also create wealth doing what it is that they love. Right. Mm-hmm. Like we get to allow ourselves to be well paid while doing the work that we're here to do. You know, my experience over the past 30 years has always been in the wellness world. I, you know, I, I look back, you know, hindsight is 2020, but I look back at what I was interested in as a kid and it was cooking and it was health and it was sports. And as I grew into a teenager, you know, it was always in the, in the wellness realm. And, um, mm-hmm. and, and so those pieces have carried, you know, with me to want to do something that is going to help others make an impact and also allow me to have, you know, a a business that gives me freedom to also do what it is that I want to do, which is travel and spend time with my kids and, um, you know, do things that are giving me an amazing life. And it, 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 so many wellness entrepreneurs, I think are left with the, um, lack of real life examples of how to actually do that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I love to provide real life examples. I'm completely transparent. I will share whatever is happening in my business in the back end of my business mistakes and all, and also show, you know, the way to get there and how to navigate those pieces. Because when women allow themselves to be well-paid, when we have our own wealth, we have more choices in the way that we want to change the world. And that is critical now more than ever. Mm -hmm. I'm curious on that note too, just kind of 
tracing back, do you remember, was that something that you felt like you were always kind of aware of, or was that, was there a moment or an experience that you had that helped that click into place for you too? With the being well-paid with the wealthy part, Mm -hmm. you know, especially with women and having choices. Yeah. Yeah. So specifically with women and having choices, my experience with that was, um, more around the realm of personal choice. And so I came from, and I, I do, I come from an amazing, uh, ancestor lineage of really, really powerful women. My grandmother mm. took me in the women's equal March, equal rights March with her. When I was a little girl, her mother marched in the very first equal rights March for women in the twenties. And I have always been, you know, told you can do anything you want. You can be anything you want. Um, you know, things happened at, through my childhood where, uh, you know, I, my grandmother was like, uh, there was a, there was a play and we were singing about American history. And she came to the play, of course, your grandma, your mom's going to come to the play. But the song was whenever there was a job to do, there was somebody who was a man. And she just about you know, after the play, she was like, why are you only talking about men in U.S. history? And I said, well, because there were no women. And she's like, oh, no, 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 no. (laughs) She was like, the superintendent got letters. My teachers got letters. There was conferences. Like, it was pretty crazy. But from that, what she, um, you know, showed was that you get to uh, have a voice And your voice will also change things. So, you know, from that, that allowed my school to then paint murals on the walls for women. And they actually had like famous women's week where it was announced on the loudspeaker. And so that piece was really pretty pivotal, 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 pivotal in my life as a young woman. And so I felt like I had personal power. And I also saw that my grandmother and my mother, you know, they were able to break, um, the cycle of women staying in toxic relationships, Mm -hmm. right? So my grandmother got divorced. She was in a very toxic relationship. My mom, of course, got married, was in a toxic relationship. I got married, ended up, it was a toxic, you know, we kind of like carry along these ancestral things. And yet we broke the cycle of getting out of that. But one of the things that I noticed, and I don't think I realized it until like the past couple of years, is that there's a difference between financial independence and personal power. And while they absolutely had the power to break a cycle and get out of a toxic relationship, what they didn't have was the means to create their own financial wealth. Mm -hmm. And so I remember, you know, when I grew up with my mom, you know, we were on food stamps. We were not wealth. We did not have our wealth. And it was almost as if when you weren't in a marriage, you didn't have a man taking care of you. You didn't have your own wealth. And so when I got out of that toxic relationship, you know, as a single mom with three kids, uh, trying to figure out what I was going to do in my late forties, no less, I was like, I'm going to create financial independence here. I'm going to create what it is that I want. So I really felt like I was able to be the cycle breaker in my family Mm. to allow myself to not only take control of my own personal power to get out of a relationship that wasn't serving me and to change my own circumstances, not be victim to circumstance, but also not be a victim to my bank account, to create what it is that I wanted to create, to allow myself to have financial wealth, which then again, gave me and continues to give me choice, much more choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. That Um, was a long story, but (laughs) I'm going to, I'm going to follow that thread actually, because it sparked, um, moved a couple of things in me and made me track this. And, and also I, I've been feeling a lot of kind of ancestral work happening currently. So, um, so I'm going to launch into a story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, um, I also have a little bit of a history of, um, coming from powerful women or at least strong independent women. And on my uh, paternal side of my family and my grandmother on that side. So I think it was like her fifth great aunt was Victoria Woodhull. So she was the first woman to actually run for president. Wow. She's, yeah. Yeah. Very exciting, but she's not often noted because she didn't actually like get on the ballot. She was just the first person to officially try to run. And she ended up dropping out because she was a proponent of free love and people weren't really into that. Wow. Back That's then. incredible. I've never heard of her before. I didn't even look her up. After She's mentioned this. in some of the books occasionally with like Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Katie Stanton, but anyway, not, not usually like a very notable, I think she was a little bit of a wild card. 
Um, so I love it. And I love that side of my family, especially within the women, there's like, we all seem to carry a a touch of that sort of like sass and I'm going to do what I want. Mm -hmm. And, um, and also, um, I've just been tuning more into my relationship and the, um, pieces that I'm picking up from my grandmother and also the pieces that I'm leaving behind. Mm -hmm. And so I remembered when I was a kid, like my grandmother on that side is super special. Like, I love that woman. She's got a lot of spirit. She's a goof. She's smart. You know, she's just a joy to be around. And she also has a side that, um, I can see, you know, it's like gift and shadow, right? There's like a piece where you don't mess with her. <laughs> you don't mess with the family. <laughs> and, um, and what I remember as, as a kid, sometimes seeing that as not being nice to people, mm-hmm. right? Like mistreating people or thinking you're better than people or, um, you know, whatever uh, circumstances were, um, I wasn't quite sure about that behavior. Mm-hmm. And so I realized there was a lot of my life where I actually sort of pushed all of that away. I didn't really want to look at that part of her yeah. and where I am now is, um, oh yeah. I mean, this is like a Midwestern family. i um, thinking about, um, both my grandmother and my grandfather, even though they're kind of pretty politically centered, um, they were a little bit more progressive with where women's voices should be in business with minorities and businesses. Um, and, and at the same time, um, yeah, there was this part of them that I didn't like. That was one of the reasons that I turned away from money for a long time because they ended up being successful. And so I clumped everything that I didn't like about them with that they were also wealthy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, don't we have a lot of that though, right? Like in our, you know, we see that, oh, I don't want to, if I have wealth, I'm going to be like them. And so I don't want to be like them. So I'm not going to allow myself to receive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then now here I am um, understanding some of that and I can have compassion for them too, because it's like, well, first of all, good for you. Y'all did (laughs) a really great job, you know, really believing in yourselves and both of them, you know, um, built what they have from the ground up and um, yeah. And there was a place where I realized, well, of course, like of course my grandmother would need to defend or want to defend what she had built for herself. And sometimes that looks like pushing controversy away or not talking about things that might disrupt anything. And so where I feel like I am now is, Oh, I get to pick that legacy up of being able to, you know, build a business, build a vision, Mm -hmm. build a lifestyle for my family And what I don't have to do is continue that with also not being able to look at controversy and not being able to look at criticism and having to try to keep everything that might ruffle feathers under the surface. (laughs) Oh, so good. That's amazing. Yes. Yeah. So it's really fascinating how these things work their way through us and through. Yeah. 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 I think we all have that, you know, shadow side, my grandmother too. She, you know, she was, she went actually through went through two divorces and so she didn't have a very high opinion of men. (laughs) I remember when I had my children, I've got three boys and she's like, what is this? You've got three boys. Where are all the girls? And I'm like, I guess my job is just to raise enlightened men, grandma. And she's like, okay, I'll go with that one. (laughs) So, um, yeah, there was a lot of, uh, uh, and, you know, again, I, I don't, I don't blame her. The, The time that she grew up in was you had to fight you know, it was, there was this, you know, just a different era in which, you know, she was constantly not given a voice. And so in order for her to have a voice, it had to be a very masculine way of bumping up against the masculine that was trying to keep her silent. Yep. Yep. And now we get to build a different way. Yeah, exactly. You get to, you know, beautifully balance both. Mm -hmm. you know, the feminine, the masculine, you know, one of the things that I absolutely believe is, you know, we need both, we need, you know, masculine structure, and we need feminine intuition, we need, we need both of those things, we have both of those things inside of us. And, you know, not only do we need that to be healthy humans, we need both of those to be have a healthy business and and life too. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious if there's a place in your business or with your clients that you are right now getting a, a, a special excitement out of helping them with, if, or if there's like a project or a particular thing that you're really into right now. 
Yeah. For specifically helping them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think one of the things that I am really excited about is, well, first of all, you know, definitely helping them see that they are powerful, that they are so much more powerful than they believe. Right. I mean, most of the clients that I work with and, and my my people are brand new or they've been struggling for a while. And so they don't have they see other people doing it, but they haven't yet experienced it on their own. And so one of the things that I love to do is to inspire and encourage and help them know what are the specific steps and where do they need to focus on right now so that they can see that this is absolutely possible for them. And, um, you know, one of the ways that, you know, I do that is, you know, in, in my year long program, I teach them the long-term strategy, which is, you know, how do we create sustainable and profitable businesses over the course of the long term. There's also a short term strategy, which many people don't necessarily talk about. And that's, well, how do you start creating cash a little bit quicker in your business? How do you create a cash infusion in your business so that you can do, you know, bring cash in so that then you can afford to work with a business coach or, you know, build out the things that you want to build out. And so creating a cash infusion is, is been something that I really like to do because I get to help people create momentum pretty quickly. And, um, and they get to see then that they are so much more powerful than they thought they were. That even though maybe their bank account says no, that they actually get to be a creator, a conscious creator in creating what it is that they didn't think was possible. And that actually happened for me in my own business. And I think that's why this is so important for me is because my coach, when I first hired my first business coach, you know, I was investing a big chunk of money. It was like $10,000 in her services. And I was 20 grand in debt. I had no uh, room on my credit cards and I wasn't sure how to pay her. And if I had just looked at my bank account and said, yep, yeah, bank account says no, can't do it. Right. And I wouldn't be where I am today because what she did is she's like, yes, I hear that these are the circumstances. Bank account says this X, Y, Z. And what is it that you want to create? And what I got to do is I got to step out of um, circumstance and into, okay, but how could this go? Like if I wanted to create just the next month's payment, like how would I create a thousand dollars? And I came up with, you know, an idea with her, you know, support. We were just like voice messaging back and forth. I'm like, oh, let me try this. And I put together a group program and I created a thousand dollars. And I was like, holy shit, I just created a thousand dollars, which means that I could, I just created that first investment and it didn't have anything to do with my bank account. Didn't have anything to do with my credit cards. And that's what I want people and women, especially to step into is to see that you are not a victim to whatever circumstance is happening. You are so much greater and you can actually step into creating something completely different, no matter what your bank account says, if this is something that you want, let's do it. Like we get to look for, for, you know, how it is that we want to create that. And that, that's, that excites me and inspires me when I get text messages from people that are like, oh my gosh, I did it. I just actually, I just got one recently from one of my clients and she's like, I can finally say I'm a real coach now. I've got tears of joy. Like I got my first paying client and I high-fived my husband and I'm so darn excited that I was able to do that. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And that was, you know, before she even started the program. So that's the exciting piece for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love it. Yeah. And also that little, that, that like subtle, but really powerful flip there too, that it's not necessarily about money. And of course it's also not, not about money, Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but, um, you know, flipping it from like, do I have money or don't I have money and how do I get money to actually like, I am a creative person. Yes. And and we can go all the way into the spiritual with like, oh, we are powerful creators, but like actually, or we can just like create an opening for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the um, best pieces of advice that I also have gotten from one of my mindset coaches is not investing in something because you feel like you don't have the money is just a terrible reason to do that. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, take the money out of the equation and ask yourself, is this something that I want? Like, Mm -hmm. is this a desire of mine? If if money was no, wasn't on the topic, like where tap in and feel like, is this support that you feel like you would want? Is this something that you feel is going to benefit you? Is this a transformation that you want? Let you be, you know, be a yes for that transformation first, instead of trying to make a decision just from, oh, I don't have the money, I can't invest in it. I think we have that backwards. We have to say yes and be willing to commit to the transformation that we want first, 
in order for the how to open up for us to actually fund that desire. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know that was true for me. You know, it wasn't until I said, yes, I'm committed. I'm going to do this. I am a hell yes for the support. Don't know how I'm going to pay for it yet, but I'm like, I do want this. And I want the support from this person. And I want to know how to do this and model it in this way. And I'm a heart. Yes. You know? And so I was willing to say yes and, and to figure it out and, and we really can figure it out. That's the beauty of it. It is. Yeah. And a, a really great teaching um, as far as resilience, if you are an uh, entrepreneur or if you are involved in running a business, because being able to make decisions based on where you want to go rather than what it looks like you have right now is really important to be able to have that sustainable long term business. Oh, so good. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Because what got us here was our past thinking. Right. So whatever we were thinking, you know, in, in, in the, in the past is what created to where we are here. And if we're only looking at what we have here, we can't get there. And I know that sounds really woo and it's like a brain twister, but it really is true. It's like, once you start to figure this out, you're like, oh man, now I get it. Now I understand what they mean by, you know, what got you here can't get you there. Because you know? it starts with deciding. That's really yeah. the beginning point. Yeah. Yeah, it absolutely is. Yeah, for sure. Where do you see a lot of your, um, you know, people getting stuck around deciding and allowing them to have their desires? Yeah. Um, one place in particular um, for especially folks that have come in uh, as like a naturally gifted healer is they feel like they actually feel like it's supposed to just happen. Mm -hmm. Or that like, if it was really true that they're meant to do this work, that people would just be like showing up and knocking on their door. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, help me please. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And so understanding, you know, that you have to also come forward and like meet where life is asking you what, where life wants you to go and is the same as where you want to go, but you have to meet it there. You can't just stand back and wait for it to happen. Yes. You have to take yeah. action. You have to take inspired action, right? We don't meditate our way to success. Well, I absolutely believe that there's an energetic vibration in which that we're going to resonate with in order to, you know, bring what it is that we want into our world. We still have to take action towards that. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. the next place where I see a lot of folks get stuck a little is, um, and this is a place that I really enjoy playing is um, offering something that's really not what they're designed to do we're really excited about sharing that they're offering something because they think that it is what people want. Yeah. And, um, you know, that can sometimes work for the short term, but that also is not a good long-term solution and usually ends up bringing in a more stressful experience when you're trying yeah. to start your business. Cause you don't, um, actually necessarily care about what it is, or you don't see the value in it yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really important to be able to find that trust to um, create an offer. And here again, with that masculine and the feminine, create an offer that's really um, tied into what you care about in your heart and what really excites you. And also be able to demonstrate and articulate the value that it has in people's lives. Yes. Oh my gosh. So good. Yeah, totally. I see a lot of people trying to pick a niche, you know, is it, you know, to, to make money versus is this something that you really enjoy? Like, what is the, you know, if you want to work with somebody and, and again, I know we all have to, you know, get specific and focus, but you know, chances are there's a deeper core and why for, you know, why you got into it. So instead of just picking what you see other people doing that are making money, you know, pick, you're going to have so much more success if you're doing something that inspires you and excites you. And you actually have to have that in order to build that resilience in your business. Cause it's not going to be all up a bill, right? If you don't have that excitement and passion and deeper, why when you get into the valley, you're going to tap out. You're going to be like, yeah, I'm out. This is not working for me. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> So what do you do, uh, when you get to those spots, if you get to those spots that are a little tougher or you feel like you're, how do you bring yourself back to the why and the passion and the yeah. excitement and empowerment? 
Yeah. Yeah. So whenever I get into places where, you know, maybe I, there's a lull in my business or things aren't going exactly the way I thought they would, or, you know, launches weren't selling out or whatever it is, you know, the first thing that I, I really try to do is I, I, I actually reach out for help. I'm like, okay, how can I support myself in this? What's going on? And how can I kind of get out of my own way and, you know, just reach out for support of the people that can support hurt me the most. And so typically it's going to be, you know, the coaches that I, that I work with a mindset coach um, to help me take a look at what are the thoughts that I've got playing in the background that is making me feel frustrated or anxious or overwhelmed because I find that um, even when things don't work, I remember that they they actually are working. They're just not working the way that I think, you know, I've got kind of like a death grip on, it has to work this one way and it has to work this way and it has to come through the front door and it can't come through the, <laughs> the back door. And if it doesn't come through the front door, it's not working. And when I take a look at when things haven't so-called worked in the way that I wanted them to, it's actually opened up greater doors for my business to move in a different trajectory mm -hmm. that created more uh, success than I knew. It's just that I wouldn't have gone in that direction because if it would have worked, I wouldn't have made that slight pivot or that slight change. So I let myself feel the disappointment of whatever it was. And then I really take a look at, okay, what I know is that the universe has got me. What I know is that everything is working out for me. And if that's true, what else is possible from here? where else do I want to go from here? How do I want to look at this? I can look at it as my business is breaking. It's not working. It's all screwed up. Blah, blah. I can absolutely go there if I want to. And I might actually sit there for a while <laughs> in the beginning, but ultimately, you know, the way out is to, you know, make it mean something different that is going to make me feel better so that I can then take action, inspired action, not hustly action from a place of fear mm -hmm. and scarcity, right? So whenever we're in the, oh my God, it's not working, it's broken, I gotta fix it. That's fear, that's scarcity. And that will only bring more fear and scarcity. So I don't take action from that place. Mm -hmm. Instead, I feel it for a while and then I sit with it and I'm like, okay, what's possible from here? What would be exciting for me to do? What would be something that would feel really amazing? What would be something that would give my clients incredible value that would also be fun for me? And so I get into more of a feeling place that allows me to then just move and think and open up to, you know, what could be possible. You know, I call them those divine downloads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have, um, you put on a summit that's coming up here. Yes. It's really exciting. A nice big event. Can you, would you mind sharing a little bit about it? Yes. This is called the shine wealthy summit and it's W E L L T H Y wealthy, because I really believe that as wellness entrepreneurs, we get to not only have wealth, but we get to create sustainable success, right? We don't need to be in the burnout mode. And so um, you know, this is a summit where we've got 18 different women that are going to be teaching on the different pillars that I teach inside of Activate Abundance Academy. And Spirit Bird, you get to be one of them. I'm so darn excited. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really happy to be back at that again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know we, we were able to have you last spring and I'm like, I want her back again. It was really fun. <laughs> so it's going to be um, six days. We're going to spread that out over the course of two weeks, um, totally free. And it really, we're bringing in you know, women here to inspire and help other wellness entrepreneurs see how they can energetically align to their desires, consciously create what they want, but also have some practical steps and hear from people who have been where they are and have created success in their business and share in their zone of genius. So we've got six different pillars. The first one is the align pillar. You know, are we, what are we, what energy are we in? What energy are we lining to so that we can actually take inspired action in a way that's going to help us get to where we want to go. We've got a design pillar, which is how do you want to design your business, your life, you know, your, your profit plan? Um, you know, what does that look like? Um, and then we've got, you know, attract to the attract pillar and how are you going to, you know, stand out and attract your ideal clients so that you don't feel like you're chasing down clients, but you're actually standing in your power and showing up as the expert in your field and attracting them to you. Um, and then we've got the nurture pillar, 
which is one of my favorites because I really believe this is such a missing piece. How are you not only bringing people into your ecosystem through the attract pillar, but how are you nurturing them? How are you cultivating community? How are you creating collaborations? How are you serving people and just giving lots of value? Um, because I see so many times coaches are just taught, well, let me just book this one hour discovery session and, and then I'll sell it into my 90 day program. And that's like trying to take a stranger into a buyer and there's no nurturing that's happening there. And, and once I stopped doing that and started creating more nurturing relationships and giving lots of value, you know, first and from a service place, then it was so much easier to move into the next pillar, which was actually inviting people to work with me without aggressive sales tactics or slimy anything, you know, it was just, they already had an experience of me. They were already in my world. They were already nurtured. And so it was simply a matter of inviting them into, you know, having the transformation or, or having support and implementing the pieces that they felt resonated for them. And then the last piece is empower because we get to, uh, you know, it's a process. We are always evolving no matter where we are in your business, on your business, whether you are at, $2,000 or whether you're at $100,000 or millions, it doesn't matter. We're constantly evolving. And so when we allow ourselves to um, master whatever process that we want, it's like we're constantly evolving and moving up and taking a look at what's working and doing more of that, like you said earlier, letting go what doesn't serve and constantly making those pivots and shifts on our business journey. And, and that has to happen. It's unfortunately, it's not a one and done. The world of entrepreneurship is, is ongoing and, and yeah. evolving like we are as humans though. Mm -hmm. Well, great. I am super excited for that event. Lots of great speakers, lots of great um, tips and advice and a lot of what you need to really get started and off the ground. So if you're interested in that, we'll definitely be sharing the links and everything that you need to find that and sign up. Um, and participate. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, Spirit Bird, tell um, us a little bit more about like your zone of genius, what it is that you love to do and tell us about hope and healing arts. I would love sure. for yeah, people to hear more about, about that journey that, that has taken you to create hope and healing arts. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, gosh, you know what it started? I think, um, as a young person, I was pretty connected to the intuitive side of me. It wasn't like it was, I was aware of it through most of my life. Um, and through most of my life, I didn't actually really think that it meant anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it felt like neat things would happen, you know, or, you know, I would pick up the phone and text somebody and tell them, you know, I was thinking about them or I had this dream about them and they'd be like, holy crap, I just had a dream about you. And it was this too, or, you know, but it just didn't really feel like it was more like fun. I didn't think it actually meant anything. And, um, you know, as I started to get that, um, calling to actually offer my work when I really actually started to I think the first piece for me was giving myself permission to want it, to mm -hmm. realize that somewhere in my, like very, very subtly in my awareness and my consciousness, I was dreaming of that, that life for myself. Um, but I didn't think I was allowed to want that. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. when I finally actually brought that forward and said it out loud, that's, I feel like where things really shifted and opened up for me. And so now, um, so I started working with clients, um, one-on-one -on -one. that was kind of where it all began. Um, I had done shamanic training for most of my, through most of my twenties and early thirties. And it's something that I loved when I got into it. I never thought that I'd be doing it to actually, uh, offer, healing and coaching work to other people. It was just something that was good for me, me and my own healing and was fascinating to me. And then I kept getting really good feedback when I was practicing with friends at home. And then through word of mouth, people started to contact me and ask for sessions. And even then I still, that was like my second stage of permission where then I had to give myself permission to actually be forward facing with it and actually say, Hey, I do this. This is what I do. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, so this all started, you know, accelerating really fast, which things usually do again, when you make that decision and say, yes, things happen very fast and you evolve really quickly. So from there, I realized that kind of same spot where it was like the one on ones were working, but wasn't probably going to be sustainable for me. Mm -hmm. And so also what was happening during those sessions is, is like, I really enjoy them. They're, you know, people are having great experiences. They're making changes. Um, and, um, what I really want to do is like teach the whole big thing. 
Mm-hmm. And I've been playing around with doing workshops with like little pieces or like a manifesting workshop or like, mm-hmm. you know, soul retrieval workshop or little pieces of the puzzle. And I even offered a couple, and this is where it goes into that alignment back to the mm-hmm. alignment where it was like, I offered some things that I, my heart really didn't want to be doing. Um, and so I had that vision for shaman school and, um, that was my, my next place of permission where it's like, oh, I get to do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that funny? We're like, oh, wait a minute. I can actually do what I want. Wait a minute. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I work with, um, healers and coaches mainly, um, not exclusively, but mainly. So it's not a beginner's program. It's for folks mm-hmm. that have already been doing healing and coaching work. Uh, maybe you've trained in Reiki or massage or are doing some mindset coaching mm-hmm. and, um, Really, it's a place where I was noticing from my own experience of being coached, where which has been an amazing experience so far. <laughs> mm-hmm. But there were definitely places where I could see that my coach could see a place in me where something needed to move, mm-hmm. whether it was like a belief or a block or something. And so I know I, I could see that they could see it in me and they could tell me, you know, to maybe journal a little bit or, you know, read this book or they would give me like things, homework to do which was still helpful, but I really wanted somebody who could just help me move it like right now on this session. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's what I teach people to do is to take those spiritual intuitive gifts that they have, all of them, even the ones that we don't feel like mean anything. Um, And it's incredible what people do. I mean, we're um, created for all different interesting reasons. So some of us are really big travelers or work through dreams. Some of us um, are like lie detectors. And I've experienced that with people where they, it's really fascinating. And the whole life, they thought that they were just being like a negative person (laughs) when actually it was like, oh, this is a gift that I have. And so, but now what do I do with it? So I really like helping people develop those. (laughs) They were the bullshit button. I love it. Oh my God. That's that's crazy. Wow. And find the balance of where is it where you're not just like telling people how to be right. Or just like trying to be the boss of somebody or um, telling them what they need to do and actually showing people the opening, like creating the opening so they can walk through the threshold themselves. So they can have the experience of what it's like to heal themselves. Um, and, and yeah, and then you get to use your gifts to help them do that. Amazing. So tell me, um, you know, more about the shamanism part is that like, I'm, I'm not even really clear exactly how is that different from the other energy modalities? Yeah. Great question. So, um, there are some similarities with a lot of different modalities as far as working with the unseen realm or working with spirit. Mm -hmm. Um, so um, and, in shamanism, mostly across the board, uh, the most generic, like fundamental sort of definition of, uh, of a shaman is being that conduit. So you're working with the unseen realms and the spirit realm and allowing that realm to move through you into the 3d. Right. And so a lot of us do some of this naturally, right. Just, it's just the nature of what intuition is. Mm -hmm. Um, it's in the the nature of feeling like you have a spontaneous idea, Mm -hmm. um, or even in sessions when all of a sudden you feel compelled to say something and you don't know where it came from. Right. Um, and, but then beyond that, what, um, what I teach in the program and what's, um, uh, integral part of shamanism is also understanding the cycles that we go through in life as individuals and the teachings and the curriculums that we go through. So with that peace in mind, we can become really powerful healers for other people. We actually can do all of the energy reading ourselves. We don't actually need to learn or like study. Um, I mean, they're, they're great. Like astrology and human design, all those things are amazing. So I'm I'm definitely not knocking them. I think they're great. And also you have the ability to actually just see what that person needs and where they're going for yourself. And part of that is understanding the cycles and being able to read where people are and what curriculum they're on. Oh, yeah. that's fascinating. Oh, so, yeah. So that's what I, I like to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this sounds amazing. Wow. It is. It's a really beautiful experience. And it's also, um, it's an eight month course. So we, we deep dive. It's, there's no spiritual fluff. Um, we, uh, I have a pretty broad range. So I um, like going, you know, I can go woo and we can stay practical too. Um, mm-hmm. So I like working on real life issues with people within the program. Yeah. Um, because that's really where a lot of the medicine is. Yeah. Um, 
And I also love exploring all the crazy unseen realms and different, <laughs> different realities and vibrations and all, all of that stuff works. Amazing. Yep. Amazing. And then if you're um, using, if you're, if you're interested in taking your work and offering it in the world um, or changing the work that you're doing right now, it's a really great way to launch yourself into that new trajectory. Cause we're going to get you really clear on what your gifts are. You're going to have experience using your gifts, which sometimes we as practitioners don't get to do that yep. with our clients because yep. we're not sure how it's going to go. Yep. So we hold back some of our abilities. So we're going to yep. work, walk you through moving through that spot so you can know how to use them and, um, and then create, you know, your, your new and unique offer. Amazing. This mm -hmm. is like, truly, if we think about, you know, the, uh, exponential value of being able to not only if you want to coach, but you can also tap into this piece that is going to help somebody, your client move a whole lot quicker, I would think. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So that, yeah, wow, definitely. I can see, I know that there's, you know, multiple different pieces that, you know, many coaches like to weave in, whether they're weaving in body work or energy work or hypnosis, I can absolutely see that this would be something that fits so good in, in the wellness realm. Mm -hmm. Do you work with a lot? I mean, are, have, what are some ways that health coaches or life coaches have actually blended mm -hmm. um, the transformation yeah. of piece with this? Oh my gosh. There's so many different ways to, I mean, that's, what's so beautiful. Well, I mean, shamanism specifically does blend really beautifully with a lot of different modalities and sort of life purposes or even careers. Mm. Um, and also what's happening right now is all of these different spiritual and cultural perspectives are coming together. Right. And they're bl being blended as well. Um, so of course there's like the really forward facing basic way where you have gifts and now you're just offering in your offering specifically shamanic healing work, but I've seen people take it and infuse it with Reiki and do shamanic Reiki. Um, I've seen, um, therapists use it and find ways to bring in more of the subconscious or more of the messages into their sessions. Mm. Um, and also, you know, a lot of people, I do primarily work with people that are doing this for their business. Yeah. Um, and not exclusively. So, um, a lot of people actually come for their own personal healing work. Um, and same thing. It's like the fast trajectory. It's like the slow down to speed up. Yeah. Stop invest in, decide that you want to make a change in your life and um, work through maybe some trauma and some shadows and understand all of the crazy spiritual experiences that are not crazy. That means something. And, um, and then you still can apply it to your life. So I've seen this, um, where people bring this into their leadership in their own business. So maybe they're, mm -hmm. you know, the CEO of a company, and now they're learning how to weave together a team that really has balance and works together and can sort of track when somebody's getting imbalanced or when there's some sort of like negative energy or something that's not working in the company and have the skills to be able to bring that back and bring everybody else together. Cause it's really what the job of the shaman is, is to maintain the wholeness of a community. This is so cool. I love it. How can people get in touch with you, Spirit Bird? Yeah. So um, most of my handles are Holton Healing Arts, H-O-L-T-O-N Healing Arts. Um, so you can find me on Instagram and Facebook that way. Um, you can send me a DM and um, I, that's also my website, holtonhealingarts.com. I have a few um, nice freebies for you on there to get started with shamanic journey and with uh, starting your healing business. Cool. And when does the eight month program start? Does it open up just once a year or is it an ongoing? Program? It's actually ongoing. Yep. Oh, cool. Great. Yep. So you can join whenever you're ready. I pretty much start people at the beginning of each month. Yeah. Yep. Fascinating. Oh my gosh. Fair <laughs> it's so exciting. So <laughs> exciting. I cannot wait to to hop back in another, another session with you where we get to play and, and explore. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be going to your website because I think this is fascinating. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, oh my God. So fun to play with you. I love, I mean, you know, talk about moving into the spot where I was like, wait, things can, what if things were just easy? And I love this connection and um, it is, it feels good. feels yeah. easy. 
<laughs> yes, I, I really do love that. Um, before we pop off real quick, I just want to share this one one um, example because I was I'm getting ready to run a retreat this weekend um, with with my clients up at a beautiful retreat center here in North Carolina. But the last retreat that we had, one of my clients um, had an incredible breakthrough, and I'm like, "Tell me, tell me about it. Like, what what was happening?" And she she has a sore knee, and so part of walking through the retreat center was you know to like walk up and around a hill. And she said, I walked up the hill and I decided to just take a stop in the, um, in the, in the chapel, there was like a, a wide, like a Dell tech round chapel. And I'm like, okay. And she said, and I asked myself, okay, how do I make this easy? How can I let this be easy? And she said, I turned to the left and there was a door that I could just walk down this little, uh, you know, wooden path. And it was taking me directly to where our meeting house was instead of having to go all <laughs> the way around and up this hill. And I was like, amazing. Like, yep. That's the way it happens though. What we get to ask, right? Like, how do I let this be easy? How could this be easy? How could this be more fun? Um, and, and it's amazing what, what comes in. Mm -hmm. Yep. Beautiful. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us with uh, Spear mm -hmm. Bird and uh, we will see you guys later. Thanks for being here. <laughs> and thanks for having me. I knew that you were going to cut out the last part anyway. I know. So. <laughs> it always happens. <laughs> but I, I knew you were going to cut like the, you know, I just, yeah. Anyways, I just wanted to make sure that people could could get in touch with you and learn more from you and get to your website and see all the amazing things that you've got going on. And thanks. So yeah. fun. So fun. Cool. Yeah. Cool. All right, love. Have a great day. <laughs> yeah, you too. Really nice to see you. Yeah, I know. What, what else do we got going on? <laughs> um, I will see you again for the for the next chat, but I will um as soon as Zoom finishes doing whatever it's thing, you know, mm -hmm. processing, I'll just email I will I can either email it to you or I can send it to you in Facebook either way. What? Okay. Uh, yeah, whatever's easiest for you, it'll work both ways. Okay, perfect. Cool. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so friend. much. Enjoy your day. Yeah, you too. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.